Okay, so it looks like we got, we have one of our mentors, Grandma D, and uh, Grandma D, is Aunt Carolyn with you? Yes, she's she's on her way, Mama. Is. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Uh -ho. Um, and then I see we have um, Aaron, and then uh, Keonte, Alisan, and then Catherine. Welcome, welcome. All right, so let me see here. I'm keeping an eye on the waiting room to make sure uh, people are getting logged in. So we'll give everyone a couple minutes. So while we're waiting, um, just to start thinking of any questions that you have, uh, if you have any words that you'd like translated in Kiowa, or if you want to know how to say something, uh, just get any questions ready. And then I know, um, Alison, you had a topic that you wanted to talk about. Um, so we can definitely uh, do that here in a couple minutes. So uh, maybe we'll get started at about 10 after, so in about three minutes. So I'm going to pause the recording for a couple minutes. All right. So um, let's see. Alison, I know you had some topics that you wanted to discuss. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get started. Um, Grandma D, would you be able to open us up with a prayer? Beto <clears throat> Help my mind, Tony. Tony, get tense on me now, Tony. God, they got it, dog, and dog. Get calm, get hide it, dog. God, God, hold on, go, God, don't get. Wait, they go, go, calm, dog. Go, go, tame, my. A dog, dog, a salt dog, a hundred get sandy cone dog, a ma'am and dog, a get pound. I get hundred get hide it, dog. I don't call me dog, I'm paid. I had a good time, dog, but I can't pay the little something. Oh, Aho. Uh -huh. Awesome. All right, let's see here. Checking the chat. Oh, hey, there's Grandma Martha. Welcome. All right. Um, thank you, Grandma D. Uh, let's see here. I keep seeing the chat, but it doesn't look like there's anything there, so. Okay, so just, I'm not on camera because I'm not in front of my computer. So, uh, but I do have some things in my Google Drive that we could look at and we could share. Um, welcome, Grandma Martha. Ogukoma. I hope you're feeling okay today. Um, let's see, we're just getting started. So, uh, Kiate. Um, I think on Wednesday you had uh, asked if we could maybe discuss um, Kiowa. Um, uh, what was it specifically? Was it burial customs, funeral practices? Ah, oh. <clears throat> that was exactly. Um, I think um, Grandma D said there was like a recording on burial customs or traditions. Let me turn down my volume. Yeah. So I looked through the recordings that I have, and I couldn't find one specifically, but I did find some that might be relevant, unless, uh, Grandma D, unless you have um, maybe a tape, or I know that there are several recordings that are missing or were missing from the digital collection, so I may not have all of them. Um, but well, I can I pull up. What, yeah, I, go ahead. 
I just knew there was one with the title Burial Rites. Oh, okay. That um, specific title. I don't know burial rites. what number it is. And I don't have yeah. my... Mm -hmm. I couldn't find one with either the words burial or funeral. And I looked through them several times, that whole list. Um, it might have been one of the tapes that went missing and that well, didn't get digitized. Some somewhere it's on it's on a list. Otherwise I wouldn't have known and they misspelled rights to spell it R I G H T S. Oh uh, that's how I remember it. Oh man. Yeah, I I didn't I couldn't find it in the list that I have or the, you know, the files that I have, but I wonder if we could ask, um, maybe Dane has access to them. We could definitely ask. Um, oh, let me see. So what I did was I pulled, I downloaded some of the, um, the audio files. Here, let me share my screen so you could see. Um, let's see maybe well, I don't know which one works but we'll try this yeah. okay can you see my screen you should say it should say spring 2024 at the top yes oh. Okay, cool. Uh, so these are the ones that I uploaded because I thought maybe they might have something that talks about burial, but there wasn't, at least, like I said, in the files that I have, um, I couldn't find one that says specifically burial. But um, before we look at these, I have an idea. Something I didn't look at is I didn't look in the, remember the old KLCRP Google Drive? I didn't look in there, so let me actually do that. Um, let, me, let me go back to my Google Drive thing here. And let's look for, uh, what did you say? You said it was spelled burial. We'll just look for burial. Um, we're looking for an audio file. Sorry for the scrolling. So this looks like um, the Kiowa Culture Program Inventory, which might be the list that you were referencing, Grandma. Uh, um, <clears throat> okay, so let me let me uh, see if I can maybe, hopefully you can see that. Let's look through the list. Oh yeah, there it is right there. Number 42, copy. Hmm. These ones are missing. These, well, at least from the, the list that I have. Do you think that the Kiowa Museum would have a copy of it? Or maybe they combined it? Like maybe they combined 41 and 42 together? Oh, it is 41. Uh, 41 is this one. Uh, let's see. It looks like it's a month apart, but Indian Medicine and Health Care. Let's see. <clears throat> but yeah, I see it right there. It's for number 42, burial rights. Um, but see these other ones, like the use of buffalo, parts and names, buffalo. None of those are in the list that we look at on on usually on our Sundays. So I'm wondering, I wonder how we could get a copy of that. I'll have to ask Dane. Um, okay, but let me go. Let me go back because I think I do have that record. Well, let me continue looking and see if maybe the file popped up on the Google Drive. Hmm. See, yeah, I'm not seeing any audio files. And it probably would have popped up 
right off the bat if it's on here. Okay, I'm going to go back. Let me look under shared files, um, KLCRP. the revised folder. Um, language files. Um, hmm, where would it be? Maybe audio? No, I don't see it in there. Uh, nope. Um, Hmm. See, that's how the audio files look. They have like a little headphone symbol. <clears throat> so that's what I'm looking for. Oops, sorry. Sorry for all the jumping around. I'm looking to see if it's in the KLCRP. Alice Ann, do you still have access to the KLCRP folder? Oh, let me look. You might have, you might be able to see it there too. Let's look in here. Let's see. Um, those are empty. Audio labeled. Let's see, I'm looking for Kiowa culture program is kind of what I'm looking for. They used to have a folder in here that said something about like uh, resources from Dane. And that's what I was kind of thinking it might be in. But I'm not finding any. Oh, let me, let me let some people in the waiting room. Hello, hi, good afternoon, Kenny and Miss Marion. We are taking a look at, we're looking for an audio recording. So I don't see it in a KLCRP folder. Let me try um, the name of that tape, which was 42. Serial rights. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, these are all documents. I don't see it there. It's it comes up in the inventory though. So it's on the KLCRP um shared drive and it's got you as the name melody um mm -hmm. there's a 41 but it says antelope only and it's on it's got the headphone symbol on it but i don't think that wasn't 41 on that list was it no i think it said uh kiowa uh kiowa something about kiowa healthcare. let me um let me go to the files um, yeah, I think that one is a, uh, it's from the Hanks collection. That one, it's an audio clip of uh, Grandma Dorothy's dad singing uh, an, one of the deer calling songs. Uh, yeah, I, I think mean, that's what that is. the wrong thing then. <laughs> yeah, they may not, it, they may not be in the Google Drive, or maybe they moved it, you know, it may not be in the same place. But this is that recording number 41. See, we have number 41. It's right here.
Session 52 at the Witchline Church near Carnegie, Oklahoma, March of 13, 1978. Can everyone hear that? Oh. Can you hear the audio? Okay, good, good. I was hoping I pressed the right button. All right. Um, this is 22 minutes long. We could try listening to this one and see if maybe they combined 41 and 42 into one digital recording. Um, this one is titled uh, Kaiba Culture Program number 41, Indian Medicine and Healthcare. And then 42 comes right after it. And it's uh, that one is on burial rights, but we're not sure if it's record if it's included in this recording. But number 42 isn't in the list of audio that at least that I have access to. So um, that's something if that we'll might need to ask either the language department or maybe ask Dane um, or even look at uh, the Sam Noble Native American language collection and see if um, there's a recording there. But um, we'll have to follow up on that. But so is everyone OK if we listen to this one? Ah. Uh. OK. See what see what we find out. People are present today is Tom Little Chief, James Silverhorn, Hazel Bolton, Esther Topon, Lisa Samte, Lloyd Talibor, George Cunha Dolly, Little Spotted Bird, Bessie Ahede, Frank Samte, myself Nelson Big Bow. At this time, uh, I want to ask my aunt Hazel Bolton to pray before we start with our session. Can I just have that little uh, chair over here so I can go to that? Yeah, we should have to bring that too. Okay, I paused it. Yeah, yeah, you should leave it here. Is that okay right there? Yeah. Okay, let me know if you need anything. All right, thank you. 
All right, let me stop sharing for a minute. Okay, so did um, Grandma D, did you want to make any comments about Hazel Botone's prayer? Any I couldn't hear that? it well. That was, <clears throat> I couldn't hear it that well. Okay, okay. Uh, oh. I heard a word or two, but it's, it's not a clear recording for, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, yeah, I was kind of soft. And it like she was away from the mic or something. I don't know. Oh, okay. That's, Maybe somebody yeah. else can, but I can't. Uh -huh. uh, let's see. who, uh, Miss Marion, were you able to catch any of the prayer or was it too hard to hear? It was very faint. I agree with what Dolores said. <laughs> Was her voice was not directly into the mic, but she was from what I could barely hear. She was, you know, talking about uh, thanking God, of course, first thing, and um, that uh, she traveled, you know, the the good road with um, God and. She said we're gathered to here and speaking and giving what we need. She's uh, giving thanks to the Lord, and there's uh, that they are there to um, save, not save, but uh, you know, to tell what they know about the Lord preaching. And there's different changes that are happening. Sometimes we don't know. What some of these changes are that she talks about, some of the men that you heard, and we have respect for them because they're knowledgeable about some of the, the language. And um, she talks about the changes, and she's about good things, good things happen. And people, or at least, you know, just make remarks about, you know, walking the good road. Because there's things in life that continue to change. And then she gives thanks. But um, there's a, there are, there is a lot of information. I couldn't hear it all. So <clears throat> these are just some of the words that I heard. That's it. I hope. Oh, oh. 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 Appreciate that. Um, let's see. Grandma Martha, it's Oguk, Oma, um, just wanted to see if you wanted to make any comments or if you were listening in today. No, I'm just listening in, and it's really low anyway for me at my end. Oh, so I'm just going to okay. listen in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and press play. Okay, could you hear that? Kind of. Kind of? Okay. I, I don't know if it's too, I'll play it for a little bit and then I'll check in and see if, you know, if it's still too hard to hear. He can't talk it over to send up because no bean that dog. Yet all you have to don't take three hundred get some tell dogs, he and don't have a doyan go back it down to be out of the game of the cocket home. One day, daughter of Tok is up a high get up, but then I go for one ticket. So we can do young and I don't have to be high get up to get up. Hey, and now. 
Okay, were you able to catch? I think that was James Silverhorn. I know he talks kind of fast. So we gotta play the next. <clears throat> Go ahead and play some. Okay, I'll play the next uh, speaker then. Pilk and Batong and Palay got the dog and 
ผ่านสิ่งที่ยึดแต่หมอให้เล่นก็อาจจะทําเสียไปแต่ผ่านสิ่งที่เอ้ยแต่ก็ทําให้ผ่านสิ่งที่ก็ปล่อยไปเกี
side of the family. My grandmother Eugenia. That is uh, from her side of the family. So my father, Ricky Colletti, was that's my dad. And, uh, because um, Grandma Eugenia is the the daughter of Paul Milokoy, <clears throat> and her father Paul Milokoy was um, the son of the he's talking about Thomas he mentioned him, the woman who brought the medicine. But anyway, to make a long story short, there were many um, buffalo medicine men that emerged from this one particular buffalo medicine. And the family at first had it, but then they took in their um, brothers, whatever. And, and maybe at a time, they would take in a friend. So then, but anyway... I'll just stop there and say what Tom said. He said uh, long ago that this there was a woman and she walked a long way and she saw this buffalo that had been dry. And then he kind of stops there because he doesn't you know doesn't know the rest of the story. And then he said, "Man, you know, like Conklin, that's Conklin." But anyway. That was uh, my grandma, Eugenia's brother. And then uh, Danny saw, hey, Miss Bluebird. And then he talked about um, Red Buffalo and Nick Topai. Mentioned their names. And he knew about the medicine. And he knew, I guess, some of these men who practice a little bit of medicine, but I'm not sure, um, besides Conklin, there were others. And that's what he says, it's a beautiful story. And that was about all he knew, because that's all he said, <laughs> mentioned. And he didn't go into detail about anything else. My mother, my grandma Eugenia, her brother was um, Conklin, and he was he actively used that buffalo medicine. And there's examples, but um, I won't go into that either. So, just speak about what Tom said. Oh, well. Martha, did you have some comment? Uh -huh, Miss Marion. Appreciate that. All right. I think uh Grandma Martha's listening in today, so um all right, let me go to the next speaker. Dog the dog. Uh, we have to back up and find out the Sorry, I lost the place, so I gotta find the spot again. You remember the timestamp it was on, Alison? 
or Courtney? Yeah. Well, who ก็ให้ไปดูเกิดอะไรก็ไอ้เกิดก็อีออกเกียร์กี่ตัวเกียร์ออกเด็กก็ให้ยาอ้อมเกียร์เด็กก็อ่านให้เด็กตัวเด็
ก็บ่ฮอกกะไฮกะบ่ฮอกกะเทนซอกะเนี่ยดอกอีดอกเตอยอยู่เตะไปอายกะก็กูกิก็ไอ้ตะกูกิซานดอกกะไฮกะดอ
I, I can say quite a few, but there were um, different people who practiced that. But it was also a lot of the medicine doctors who practiced that as well, as well as the other uh, types of, uh, you know, medicine that they treat it with. Uh, okay, Omaha. Oh, aho. All right. Any questions so far from anyone? All right, I'm going to go ahead and press play. And it looks like we're we have about 10 minutes left on this recording. Ed Hazel with the time, Boton. something my grandma mm -hmm. okay um 
Did, would anyone like to make any comments? I'm not sure if you could hear the recording, but I want to check and see. Dolores? Well, I really can hear, I'm trying to think. What I did remember was I think she started out with uh, that she hanged, they guess, through, through stories is what she she heard, some of them. And then it sounded like toward the last she gave her personal experiences about uh, and then I think she said, I couldn't really understand that her father used to give them all he, is that cedar? Uh, mm -hmm. Something about cedar. So anyway, that's it. I don't want to mess it up. I don't, I don't remember. That's, that's all I remember. Oh, Grandma. Uh, Miss Marion, would you like to add? That was Hazel Bolton. She just, yeah, that was Hazel. Um, Hazel. She says, hot, so yeah, cold. It's all different kind of descriptions, she says. Kind of missed the first part when she was getting into the very beginning. But anyway, she said, um, the men spoke of different things, various medicines, I guess. And she said, whenever they, she talked about the past, they fought the enemy, and they had the uh, buffalo medicine men that treated the wounded and uh, stories been passed down and um, that she supposed that part wasn't clear and she knew that they gathered their medicine from the earth they also had medicine drinks medicine drink that they gave sometimes gave to the patients. I'm adding the word patients. And then she talks about her grandfather. And that part wasn't quite clear. She's talking about some, maybe it's one of her, her grandpa's relatives or somebody was going to school. I think she said Riverside or someplace. And that he wasn't well, it took him to the hospital, but then she didn't say anything about, well, then she said, then they asked or went for a conquering hummingbird because this young man, I guess, he, he did, did not respond to white men's medicine. So they brought in um, conquering hummingbird, or conquering, and he uh, healed the boy, and uh, then she talks about Boto. So, they tone. That's his Indian name, which means like busy, busy tail, which is another word or for description for squirrel. And okay, so that was about that much information that I gleaned from this tape. Oh, Bob. Oh, aho. Thank you. That's awesome. Uh, let's see here. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play the next speaker. Yeah. No, I ain't got a dog in the head, God. 
Okay. I don't I know that was kind of hard to hear. Did anyone catch anything? Well, I will say that I guess I'll pass it on to Mary and she's younger, she probably heard better, but there are many interesting uh incidents that she she related. And I know she named uh something that I think is her child. Anyway, the doctor that she mentioned then was, she said, Quelo. And I remember him. And I, uh, uh, and I knew that he was an Indian doctor. So I, I just knew that as a child. And and I think his name is Yegu, but they call him, Kai was calling mm -hmm. Quelo. And then, uh, mm -hmm. She named it now at this point. I forgot who the uh, doctors, but she named a lot of interesting uh, incidents of people healing, and she said that it was it was uh, God's kindness, and that's why and that all these 
people were healed and the men were given this uh, ability to help uh, people. And I and, and I know that like I say, I'm not going to, uh, maybe Marion heard better, but I think she said son A, something in there. And then another one was, uh, I think, uh, I think her one, someone in her family was the one that was needed a doctor. So someone went and brought Quelo, said so. Anyway, that's the extent of what I know, except she did mention that how, <clears throat> how the, I was benefited greatly from Indian doctors overhaul. Oh, oh, awesome. Uh, Miss Marion, would you like to comment? Um, the first part of the introduction, who was speaking? Was that Hazel? No, that was not Hazel. Who was speaking? Was Liz it Isabel? No, it's Lucy Somthy. I think that's oh, it. Oh, okay. I oh, think okay. That's, uh, okay. The, uh, whoever is conducting the meeting, as I think he said Lucy Somthy. Okay, I just wanted to make get that. I didn't sound like anybody. I knew. Um, I missed the first little uh, sentences she said, but. She said, there's uh, lots left. She meant there a lot of people are gone, I guess. And the medicine is real and it's good. And it heals. Yeah, oh boy, dog. She said, it's real. And uh, she was talking, I guess, of someone in her family. And that's what I could not quite hear. She said something chased her. And the doctor said it was her heart. And I guess he didn't do anything about it. And so her family went to get Quelo. That's a Yegu man. And I think Quelo is a, is kind of a mm, takeoff from a Mexican word, Quelo. I mean, but anyway, that's another story. And she said he knew he was a medicine man, and he treated for four days. And he treated the girl for this person, and uh, she said he was an older man, Elke. And she says it was God's gift, all of these medicine. And that we know. And many people saw, saw this and they knew that um, our medicine was a good one. It's real. And then she speaks about uh, my grand James Tuatchi, my grandfather's grandpa, Stodel Stoy. And she was a medicine woman. And she healed people. And uh, sometimes she would use a scarf. But she also treated, she was an expert in treating um, uh, like medicine, snake bites and bug bites and anything. Sometimes she even went, well, I won't go into detail because that's not part of the story. <laughs> so, Obaha, unless you have a question for me. Oh, a uh ho. -huh. Uh, Miss Marion, I wouldn't mind hearing uh that uh story you were gonna share. Oh, Stodel Stoy, that's my name now. And I was gonna say she also went with the warriors when they went on the war warrior trips. She was also one of the medicine women that sometimes accompanied them. 
But the Buffalo Medicine Men always did accompany the warriors. And my grandfather, James, too, I just grandfather was also a uh, Buffalo Medicine Man, so he was one of those who went along, too. There's a lot of stories. We be they're quite lengthy, so just a brief overview. Omaha. Oh, aho. That's awesome. Okay, I think there were like a couple minutes left on this recording, so I'm going to go ahead and play it and we'll see what it says. Hell, take this. I just that. Hell, oh, take this. Hell, take this. Hell, take this. Hell, take this. I Sound, that sounds like Louis. Yeah, Dolores. Yes. Speak. Yeah, well, he's just speaking generally, not uh, to cover the whole subject, not to name any. I don't, if he did, I missed it. But anyway, he's just speaking about how how uh, in the past he's talking about how I guess God watched over us and today we still speak Kiowa and today and then then he and then he talked about uh, <clears throat> how the Kiowa people took care of one another about when they were when they were when sickness, when they experienced it, it made them sick. Well, he's just talking about how it was in the past and today. It's he didn't say it was different. He was just saying that uh, 
even today, I guess you're saying that's our experience to to be there when and know about all the uh, ways that the medicine men were able to to uh, help and and people speak of them, the medicine men, the medicine women, whatever. So that was what I got. There's medicine men and women and Indian medicine, and it's how they helped the Kiowa people through the years. Obaha. Uh -huh. Oh, um, Miss Marion, would you like to add any comments? I just love, I, I really like, I just enjoy our kind of words because they're so descriptive. And, and as the elders say, it's sometimes the English just doesn't quite do it <laughs> to explain what they're saying. I think I don't know if it's because, because we know the words. If we know the words, you know what it means. And um, he was just speaking in general, as uh, Dolores had said. And uh, it's just part. It's just part of nature, I guess, for our Kiowa people to they had respect for all of nature, and you know where did this all come from, and they knew about it. And our language and our medicine has come a long way. And um, sometimes, you know, people get sick and then they're hopeful. And um, they ask for help. And that comes because they have medicine. We have the people who practice it, but yeah, Dolores covered it all, it, and he just summarizes everything in this uh, brief message with his words, and that's all I can say, because it's just, there's just so much there. Oh, 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 oh. that's it, oh, wow. fascinating. Oh. Fascinating, he says. It's true. Aho, uh -ho. that's awesome. Appreciate that. <clears throat> um, I'm going to see if I can do some research and see if I can find locate that recording number 42. So uh, two weeks from now, uh, so the week after Easter, uh, we'll have our Sunday session again, and maybe we'll see if we can find that recording. Um, did anyone have on any question, any other questions about this recording or any other comments um, before I um, I bring up? So I have some documents that I found from the Labar notes regarding uh, burial and funeral and that type of thing. Um, I was gonna, I'd like to make a comment right quick. Oh, I was just, one day. I, the, since we've been the last meeting ever. We're talking about uh, funerals and going, that type of thing. And today people don't practice that actively practice that. But um, I do know you know, like I said, people look sometimes will cut their hair, but then there's the other part which um, you know, today some people practice not everyone. Have respect for their whoever passed, and they don't participate in any of the events like the dancing, big celebrations, and getting in the middle of the circle and you know actively participating. But if they go attend those, they would just stay in the background and not be part of the 
dancing groups or whatever. And that was their way of showing respect, at least for a year, for a whole year. And that was done back in the old days, too. And today, some people practice it, but it seems that most of the younger ones today don't really um, pay attention to those things. And, uh, okay. Oh, uh, that's it. Oh, I was going to say some more about other. I'll just wait till I'm fine. I, just, I want to hear what you have to say about your. Um. Okay. Uh. Let's see. So let me find find where I put this now. I uploaded it. Uh. This morning. Okay. Uh, let's see here. All right, let me share my screen. Hopefully, you'll, you'll be able to see this. Let's see. <clears throat> uh, let's see, this one. So this is the first one I found. And this is just a quick, like a quick one page. Uh, let's see, I know it's kind of small. Let me turn it this way. Did uh did it get bigger or is it sideways <laughs> for you? Bigger. It's bigger. Okay. Oh good. Okay. <laughs> I tilted my phone and I'm like, I don't know if it's gonna work for the recording, but hopefully. Um okay, so I thought this was interesting. These are from the Labar notes. And let me zoom in. So so the Labar notes are I think, uh, Grandma D, you're familiar with them. Is everyone familiar with the Labar notes? They're from the, um, oh yes. gosh, what is it? Yes. Yeah. Doors yeah. yeah. Collection. Is that it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, and so there's this uh, inventory list. And so basically, and then there's like all these, uh, basically these documents were typed up by a group of anthropology students and they were compiled. Um, and so you can see the date there. This says 8-28-1935. So basically this uh, research team, they went out to, uh, they identified several Kiowa informants. And so usually it'll have the name of the person who typed this. So this, you'll see Collier over here, and then you have the date, and then you see the informant's names, and this says Guy and Mary Buffalo. And so they are the informants for this information. And so they would ask, you know, questions about certain topics, and then um, the informants, the Kiowa informants would, would basically share what they knew about it. And then the uh, researcher, the anthropologist, they would type it up. And you have to take these with a grain of salt, I think, because, you know, they didn't understand Kiowa, the researchers and some of the informants only spoke Kiowa, so they were typing things through an interpreter. So I think, you know, but it's just really interesting to kind of see people's different um, perspectives on things. So this is kind of like the beginning of, this is only one page, but the other document I found is from like, uh, they, these are in sets of a hundred pages each. So in the first 100 pages, there's this one page on death, burial, and mourning. And then I found like 19 pages in the 400 section, So which is the other document. And um, I can, uh, I think you, you probably have access to this Google Drive um, file folder, Alisan, but I'll, I'll put the link in the chat. I wonder if I can... Let me make sure everyone has access to this. Uh, okay, so it says anyone with the link has access. Okay. Sorry, let me go back to the chat here and put the link in the chat. So this is the first document that we're looking at right now. Okay, so I'll try to read it out loud. Sometimes it's uh, hard to read. So it says, death, burial, and mourning. 
when a boy, man, or old man dies, old women, non-relatives volunteer to dig the grave and bury the body. When they have completed this job, the family gives them presents. When a man dies, his father, brother, or son paints his body in preparation for burial and dresses him in his best clothes. Women have nothing to do with preparation of a man's body for funeral. The father or the son kills a horse or horses at the grave. When a woman dies, her female relatives prepare her body. The old women dig the grave just as they do for a man. If the woman owned horses, they kill one or more at the grave, destroy her clothing and teepee. In preparing for burial, the faces of and head, the face and head of either a man or a woman are painted red. And then mourning. <clears throat> when a man loses his wife, he cuts his hair and his body. His sister and mother do the same. He cuts the tails and manes of his horses. During the period of mourning, he neglects his, pers his personal appearance, goes around unwashed in old ragged clothes. When his hair grows to neck length, he starts fixing himself up again, and the mourning ends. When a man dies, his MF, I'm guessing that means mother, father, aunts, and uncles cut off their hair and lay it on the body in the grave. When a wo woman loses her husband, she lives apart from his family while mourning. When her mourning is over, they invite her to a feast and give her fine clothes and bracelets. It is at this time that the deceased man's brother steps forward and asks the widow to marry him. If none of the brothers want her, they tell her that she is free to marry anyone she wants. Okay, that's the first document. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? <laughs> yeah. It's like a history lesson, but that's only the beginning. That was just, you know, that one informant because... This document right here has 19 pages of different accounts of, it, it gets into more like the philosophical kind of metaphysical, like some of the reasons behind why the Kiowas did some of those things. And it also mm -hmm. talks about whether or not Kiowas believe in the spirit world, if they believe in heaven or hell, you know, those type of things. So it gets really interesting in these next documents. But uh, does anyone want to comment on that first one? Will I get the link here for this next one? Oh, me. <laughs> okay, let me. Whoops. Ooh. Okay, there we go. So I put the other link in the chat. Um, okay, hey, so let me, let me pull it back up. Okay, hey, Tha. Okay, sorry about that. Had to get things situated. I put the second link in the chat. So this one is 
uh, Le Bar notes, um, starting on page 403. So you can see here it says cost of death. I don't know how far we'll get here, but uh, you all can read this part, but um, if you're interested, that first this first page is, um, so you can see it says Richardson, and then the, how do you say that name? The um, the informant here is King Toddle. King Toddle. Oh, oh King Toddle. King Toddle. Oh, yeah. And you can see the date, July 14th, 1935. Um, so this one, so this first, let's see, there's a paragraph here, and then this other paragraph from White Fox. Um, and this, these are basically two versions of the uh, what we know today as the Mrs. Ant and the Same Day story, but it's uh, the origin of death among the Kiowas. So I'm, I'm not going to go through it right now, but you all can, I put the link there so you can read it if you're interested, because it's uh, pretty interesting how stories evolve, you know? Um, okay, then this next section talks about the spirit world. So this is Lone Bear, uh, July 11th, 1935. Um, so this is talking about the spirit world. So it says a good, let me zoom in, a good place to be, no special direction. When departed souls speak to the living, they always refer to the happy conditions in the spirit world. A baby soul goes to the spirit world like that of any adult, even if it has no name and dies soon after birth. Uh, something, oh, I guess Long Bear, the informant, has dreamed that he saw his deceased father and mother. They appeared just as they did when he last saw them in life. Although the spirit world is a happy place, a man does not want to die. Okay. But he is not afraid to die. A man prefers to die in battle as a warrior in his prime. Next to that, he prefers to die of old age. A woman prays to become useful old women and die of old age. And then this one is uh, dead people go to, I don't know how to say that. Is it come so teepee of the dead? How do you say that? Yeah, calm though, I guess. And then it says at, oh gosh, what does that say? Meeting, at some meeting, <laughs> the owl was once asked how dead people lived, and the owl answered, you think you live well, your buffalo are nothing but nice. So I don't know, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> And then a departed soul is called uh uh calm toe. How, how do you how do you say that? Calm toe. Calm toe. Oh. And then the spirit world is uh let's see. Calm toe. How do you say or kia? Calm toe kia. How how would you say world like spirit world? I think you're trying to say a spirit house. Home dog, yeah. Oh. Dog. And that's yeah. what it looks like they're trying to, you know, they, they don't know how to spell it, so they're just trying to sound it out with English letters. So uh, whatever you think. <laughs> Um, okay, so then Mary Buffalo talks about this paragraph here. So she says, uh, the dead go to a place where there are only ended teepees face west instead of east, as in this world. They are happier there. Medicine men can talk to the dead, put up a, spe a special teepee cleaned inside, strewn with sage to sit on. Men and women enter quietly. Medicine men praise smokes, calls on dead. The coming of the spirit is through the air. It is announced by a shaking of the teepee and the yelling of the spirit. He cries because he is sorry for the people on earth. He wants a pipe. It is lit and offered to him held up. Mary repeats a story told before of a man who was killed mysteriously in battle 
and who returned to settle an argument concerning the circumstances of his death, which had reflected on his honor. So that's one uh, account. And then Lone Bear shares, the dead go to, uh, let's see, it looks like it says that, uh, dead people's home, <laughs> uh, spirit world, I guess. One can talk to dead in special teepee. Ask, is it better on earth? No, it is better here. Talk not clearly, but in a high squeaky falsetto. Tells of a warrior who rode foolheartedly into the face of an enemy and was killed. People thought his bridle broke. This warrior's ghost returns to settle argument. My bridle did not break. I went on intentionally. Um, in the West, where the land is red, the dead go. So I thought that was kind of interesting. The, uh, you know, here our TP, our door always faces east in our TP, and then apparently in the spirit world, the spirits' TPs face west. That's kind of interesting. Um, okay, this uh, attitude towards death. Loss of consciousness is death. Um, also, death approaches you when you sleep. And then talks about childbirth. Uh, if a woman dies in childbirth, it's a great misfortune, but not evil or bad luck. Death in childbirth is attributed to accidental causes, falls, etc. Um, let's see, the next one talks about owls and death. Um, this is kind of hard to read. Let's see. Some people, when they die, all medicine men and some others become owls. Uh, Mary, let's say Mary Chance. I guess he sings something, and I don't. I don't understand that writing there. Uh, build us a big fire. Oh, is that that eighth day? Eighth day, baby, goo. Is that what that is? Eighth day, baby, goo. Uh, Mary tells one of the medicine men named uh, whom the Kiowa fear to become an owl, and he sends telegram to the Kiowas. Oh, is that Mamafe that she's talking about, maybe? Mamafe, whom the Kiowa feared, who became an owl. He sent telegram to the Kiowas, and then all Kiowas become owls, she thought, at another time. Let's see. Uh, this one says, when a person dies, they become an owl. And then this other one is, the owl is also considered a spirit of a dead person. A special a special power called uh let's see, spirit of dead power. I don't know how you would say that, but it looks like it says A T E D D. Oh no, Honya Haiga. Derived from the owl gives the power to gain information of any sort from the spirit of the dead in the owl. Hmm. Okay. Well, now we get into ghost stories. So this is kind of interesting. They start talking about different ghosts. Um, I'm going to skip over this because uh, the burial stuff is down below. But if you want to read through this, it's super interesting. I got some different stories here. Uh, they also talk about uh, how the spirit spirits camp in the West. Um, let's see. And then they think it might be dangerous for living people to face their peepees west. Um, and this this parenthesis thing looks like maybe a comment. It says, uh, from other statements, seems to be all around anywhere. Why should a migratory people have a stationary heaven? Which I think is like, to me, in those parentheses, that's a comment from the, uh, the person who was writing this, the anthropologist, Labar. So... That was kind of interesting. Um, this one talks about a whirlwind. A whirlwind is to be feared because it contains the spirit of the dead. Its origin is at the grave. When one approaches, a person must cover his head and will cross his index fingers against it because the whirlwind has the power to twist the mouth, cross the eyes, and twist the person all up. This happened to Harry Ware, brother of Lynn Ware, who was carried home to camp by his comrades. 
Harry's mother went to informant's husband who had the power to cure illness caused by a ghost. She found him with some men having a smoke. On hearing the case, the men immediately fixed the pipe which he smoked. The doctor then went to the boy, made him sit up, called for a pan of water, went all over the boy's body, sucking out the dirt and a hair three inches long and trash. Immediately, the boy recovered consciousness and began to talk. The boy's mother, in her anxiety, had promised everything, including herself, but he refused and took only a buffalo robe. Interesting. Okay, here's where it talks, starts talking about buff, uh, burial, and now it's on page 407. Um, okay, burial. Bodies are tied. tail tied to the kill, not on his grave, but nearby, not his dog unless he was specially fond of it, burial feet east, head west. And then white box shares, when a man died, he was washed all over the body, dressed in his clothes and painted on the face only, done not by immediate relatives, but by cousin, either white jealous or Person is washed by individual of the own sex, so like, you know, not. No wake. Bury man, same day as death. If he died in the night, he would be buried. Bury in places spot even on cherries. After being dressed, corpses wrapped in buffalo robe, tied around with a rope placed on a horse. Sometimes relatives, uh, sometimes others dig the grave. There is no fair when you at the grave, there's no mark. Um, at death, put on buckskin suit, paint him, roll and roll up in fine buffalo robe, then thick hide, bury in the ground, feet east, head west. So he can walk west each time the sun comes up. So after his death, the body was dressed in the finest clothes. To the saddle, right not pat. If the bundle is very large, there might be no saddle use, or someone might ride behind the saddle to hold it on. If very heavy, a travois is used. There is no special honor about any particular way. Big Bo decided on the burial place, a cave up in the side of Mount Scott, three to four miles away. Great accompanied to the spot, including his two wives. So they might many members of the Ogui. Uh, the body was carried on horse as far as it could go, then by men. During the time of the session, the gathering burns with the metal setting, catching large of both his wives, uh, noticed them in small ones afterwards, but it is not sure whether this is part of the mourning custom. Also, the teepee where he died. Cave burial is less common than ground burial, but there's no special honor attached to it. It was chosen because it was summer. Ground is so hard then to dig in. In a cave, the only precaution is to pick out a dry spot so the body will not be washed out. No hole is dug, just rocks piled around and over it. No case of two bodies being buried in the same cave. If there is not room for a body to be placed east to west in the cave, another will be chosen. For this is an inviolable rule for all, including captives. Buried with a man with a shield, a plain white one made for him for protection or made by him for protection and feathered in the regular way. It seems to imply a vision. It had no duplication. There are no ceremonies. Um, let's see. This one continues. No case known of cave burial for baby. For all, including captives, caves are always chosen for burying warriors killed on the path, for they have nothing to dig with. Higher places are preferred for burial. Um, 
people. There are no family cemeteries of any sort. Bodies would never be moved in the old days. Recently, it has been the case that cave burials have changed because life used to steal the property. There is respect for a grave, but no dread of it. Um, uh, others may be asked for a hard job or may be asked at once. Four people or captives are asked to have if they do guys having a decent funeral will be given to him and someone will dig a great generous full about his ailed for him and if they want to do the job he must appoint someone to do it for nothing or pay for it himself but are the funeral arrangements of a captive of his and goes to the grave himself as a body. Of the band, of the, uh, the band. <laughs> if uh, it's I don't know what that says. Something would accompany the body to the grave. Maybe is that something about maybe the uh, community uh, and family? Uh melody that's so patoki. So patoki. So patoki. Is the band leader. Uh, so, is yeah, this so this big. word right here? How do you use it? Sounds like uh, are they trying to say uh, the band? Like, what's the word for the band? Because well, a large uh, portion of something. Um, uh, so the band would be a large portion of his do day do. What are they trying to say of his house? Or the or the man though. Like the people in the what are band? See right there. The, the band. Right here. The it's called uh, it could be a band or division. But he's I think he's referring to everybody that lived in his in camp in his division. They've got a spell a crazy way. Yeah, <laughs> I was just wondering, maybe it's a Kyla word that they're trying to type out, but that's what it sounds like, right? Yeah. Like it has uh, his band, they would just go with him to the grave, whoever was. He's trying to say, or they're trying to say, like you would say of your household, if you say those, which means house. But the way they got to spell it sounds like his shoes, don't they? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was wondering. Uh -uh. So, so something, so day. <laughs> that, that's completely wrong, that word. Or what they're trying to do. It was being said in Kiowa, <laughs> the, uh, whoever was typing it. If Richard's in person. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Uh, let's see. So, a large portion of, I guess, his household or the band would accompany the body to the grave, some on horseback, some walking. This is because the distance is several miles. There's no feeling that horseback is a special honor or is reserved for family, etc. His society and his family work together to make the event a great one. All nearby, Dofa Doki, ride over to attend if possible. 
even if not related and of a different society. Okay, so that's when a leader passes. And then it talks about burial of a war party. Uh, so like the leader of a war party. Um, let's see. I thought this was interesting here. So I'm gonna skip over maybe like the third sentence. Does anyone on the war party be buried the same way? They do, they do not give the body a complete burial um, because there's no time when they pass this place later, six months, a year, or two years. The bones are here in a blanket and buried in the ground and covered with rocks. A second burial is purely out of respect for the deceased person goes there immediately after death, regardless of burial. Sounds pretty practical. <laughs> uh, let's see. This is more about a warrior, about cave burial. Because, um, you know, if someone dies when they're out there, they have to be really quick about it and continue on. Uh, let's see, let me go down. Uh, attitude towards dead and graves of the dead. People are not afraid of a burial place. They neither avoid it nor go near it. Uh, let's see. So people are afraid to go near these places, but one avoids a close friend's grave, not because of fear, but because the sight of it makes you sad. Um, not usually afraid of dead relatives unless they are medicine men. <laughs> Medicine and spirits are definitely bad witch people. So have a lot, yeah, that's what I'm have a lot of respect. So it says there is respect for a grave, but no dread of it. Interesting. Um, okay, then destru destruction of property, killing of horses. If a man has only one horse, it will probably be killed at his grave. If several are owned, the best ones are killed. It's up to the survivors to say which ones and how many. There will be no accusation of stinginess if only a few are killed. Horses are shot for women, not for babies. Later, or the latter, has, of course, all its possessions burned too. Uh, baby of a sofa no tea gets no special treatment. A captive's favorite horse will be shot. Um, society functions. If a warrior is brought home wounded, the society will chip in to pay the cost of the medicine. Uh, if he dies at home, he will be avenged. Two to three of the leaders will pay a visit to his grave. If it is close, if it's far away, it will not be visited because he had a decent burial. The leader of the avenging party is almost always the leader of the one that lost the man, for he has a stain to wipe out. He is called something, roaming buffalo robe that has shrunk. No idea what that says. It's hard to make out. Uh, let's see. One of the main functions is to arrange for the burial of its members, whether they die of old age or in active service. They make up an outfit of grave clothes from the finery of the members. The members usually dig the grave and they're paid by other society members. The society is ahead of, is ahead of the family in this respect. They also often contribute to the cost of a medicine man, even oh. if it is a case of ordinary sickness. So that's all about if a society leader or a society member passes. Um, okay, morning customs. So this one talks about morning costumes. So women wear a sleeveless dress and a kind of cape sewed down the front of old skins, e.g. old teepee hides. The length of wearing a cape is the morning period. Hair is cut in different lengths. Morning period, under five, worn on um, three months, hair out to shoulder, hair cut to shoulder. Over five, I'm guessing that five means five years old, but I don't know, doesn't say. Over five, one to two years with no differentiation for children or sex. One case known when a woman who lost two children under 10 
cut off fingers for each one. So this is the usual procedure for husbands. No cape wearing for babies who die at birth. The mother cuts two to four inches of hair. A man cuts his hair in the same way a woman does, wears old clothes made out of old teepees. During this time, he would rather go on war parties in order to forget. At the death of any close relative, especially a husband or child, a woman slashes her head, arms, breast with a knife. During the morning period at sunrise and sunset, the morning goes out from the camp for a wailing. This lasts for one to two years, dwindling in intensity, even during the sundance. At latter, the morning family camps as, at the back, as far away from the circle as possible, and they do not attend the dances. Occasionally, they will not come to them, but will stay out two to three days journey. No participation in social dances, though. They will always be invited to attend a family feast or a society reunion, etc. They may attend, but will only eat, not dance. Society events like the, the, I don't know, does that say sham battle? Or evening meetings will not be required to attend unless he feels like it nor even the police hunt unless he is specially called. However, a Hasoki will have to attend something. His personal brief must be subordinate to his duty. Does that mean like a uh, like if you're a headsman, then you have to attend regardless? Is that how do you say that word? Does that mean a uh, I'm guessing that's the society has head, but Tanya High Cost. Uh, let's see. And then it goes on, but I see we're over time. <laughs> so uh just wanted to show you what I found in the Labar notes. I think these uh these warning uh, the the whalings they talk about. Um, I remember Martha Parker Addison, she talked about how her grandma um, told her that all um, women would have different types of songs, like kind of like cries that they would cry whenever they were mourning. So I think that's really interesting. Uh, let's see. I talked about revenge, revenge war parties. Um, and I think that's and it continues. Let's see, I'm gonna. And then this talks about um, burial, mourning, inheritance, mourning customs, afterlife, and spirit worlds. So this kind of goes over some more information on what was talked about in those first few pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop there and I, I put the link in the chat for you to check out and hopefully hopefully that helps with something oh uh -huh. That was um, so many customs. That was a lot. Yeah, it's like, it's just so so interesting to hear like all the history, you know, and like understand like how things came to be, like what yeah. parts we have now, you know, that we, we kept from that time. Um, let's see, I'm looking at the chat. Uh, okay, so the... Uh, can we go over the translation for Sofa Doki? And also, uh, Grandma D, can you can you say that again for us? Sofa Doki. Sofa Doki. Oh. And then, what does it what does it translate to? Well, so is their dwelling, their teepees. So uh, so he's uh, watches over whatever number of teepees are in 
his group or his there he's responsible for whatever whatever but anyway he's a what shall what shall we call him if it's a group of teepees you might just say be like a mayor of a village or something but i don't know really how many are in a, a band so maybe marion knows but i under the impression that it's about 20 lodges i'm not sure so but the stopatoki is selected to have that place to take care of the band. In other words, he probably decides where to camp, when to camp, and where to go, and all that. Oh, <clears throat> when to move and that. So I, I think Marianne would <clears throat> know more or other additional information. <clears throat> Oh, I hope. Um, yeah, I think Miss Marion had to log off, but um, but hopefully that answers your questions. Um, Rachel and Elephant. Ah, all right. Any other questions? Great, awesome. So I put the links in the chat. Hopefully you can still see them. Let me know if you need them again. <clears throat> and those Labar notes are really, really interesting. Um, so usually if you're looking for a topic that you're like, hey, what did Kaiwa think about whatever? Um, as long as you take the notes with a grain of salt, knowing that, you know, they're they're written by anthropologists by non kiowas that are <laughs> are hearing from interpreters. Um and sometimes the, the informants, you know, we're speaking English, but anyway, it's really interesting. Um so uh Dane has a uh a copy of so they're available I think from a D is it in the Doris Duke collection. Um where is that at? Is that the one at the Oklahoma Historical Society or at, oh, at the Sam Noble? Oh, no, the group came from Santa Fe. So they, when they came in the 30s. Oh, okay. Oh, the anthropologists that took oh. those notes. Oh, okay. well, they, I know your grandma Dorothy didn't like Labar. And um, <laughs> if you uh, will. If you go to all the notes, I think he puts his own opinion in there. A lot oh, of has yeah. his personal <laughs> opinions in it. So you just overlook that and because anyway, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't read yeah. too much of them, but I know that I've read a few where he does put his own opinion in there. So anyway. Oh. And they get very uh, graphic, like very, I don't know, so, so I guess what could be considered inappropriate today, like it's just very, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's not something that you would share like publicly or talked about for Kiowas, but yeah, so so as long as you're aware <laughs> that they can be pretty uh, opinionated as far as the anthropologists are concerned, uh, but it does, you know, there's there's still some things that we can learn from there and you know, be able to try to figure out, okay, well, how would how would Kiowas think about this, you know? What would what was what were they really trying to say? <clears throat> but um but yeah there is a a uh, kind of like a table of contents, I guess, for those Labar notes. Um and I think it might be on the uh, Google Drive somewhere at the KLCRP Google Drive under Dane's resources. So if you look up Dane's name and find his folder, I think they're in there. Um, and I know Dane is happy to email a copy. Um, and I have a copy, I think it might be the complete one. 
so if anyone is ever looking for a topic, I can always search it up and send the pages that there's like thousands of pages. So it's like a lot of information, but um, okay. Well, I guess we better uh, give you some time to go take care of things. We kind of went a little over time, so I appreciate you hanging in there with us. But um, with that, well, uh, I'll, I'll try to find that recording number 42 that we talked about. I'll see if I can locate that for next time. And other than that, uh, our next session will be in two weeks, uh, Sunday, April 7th. So, all right, Omaha. Um, hope everyone has a good evening. Um, hopefully the storms don't get too crazy wherever you are. And uh hey god but oi don't talk oh yeah happy Easter happy Easter as well happy Easter Peku Teta Hey, uh, Grandma. Honda. Honda inside, though. Oh. Um, uh, are you going to, do you know if you're going to the uh, Kiowa Club at OU, their uh, language night? I don't, I don't know when they're having it. Uh, I think they said Tuesday, March 26th. This coming Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock. Oh. <laughs> Where is it? Uh, let's see, where is it? At Copeland Hall on the OU campus at Copeland Hall. At Copeland Hall, okay. Yeah, where the Native, uh, Native Nations Lounge is, where the Indian Club is. Okay, what time? Uh, 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. But okay. they're doing a language night, and I think uh, they're... They invited the Kiowa Language Department and the Credentialing Board and teacher candidates, teachers. Okay. So, I was just wondering. I'll be, <laughs> there, if I, I'll be there if I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. Sounds good. All right, Grandma. Have a good evening. Hey, guys. Oh, Oh.